But this video is going to be about something I call factoring with negative rational exponents. Um, I noticed that a lot of my students have trouble with this, so I thought I'd do something uh, that they can watch some examples of. So let's take a look at one. Um, so our first example is uh, I have x to the two-thirds over 6 plus 5 uh, times x to the negative one-third. So it's that negative one-third that causes a lot of people trouble. So the way that I deal with this is um, I rewrite it so that everything has a positive exponent. So instead of having 5x to the negative one-third, I'm going to have 5 over x to the positive one-third. So remember, x to the negative one-third in the numerator is really just x to the positive one-third in the denominator. So after I've done that, I look at it, and what's the common denominator? Well, that's going to be 6 times x to the one-third, so I've got to have everything that shows up in either denominator, um, which means that I need to multiply this part by x to the one-third over x to the one-third which is just a, an interesting form of 1, right? I change the way it looks, I don't change what it actually equals. And then this part, I need to multiply by 6 over 6. Okay, so that's going to give me... Uh, what happens here is x to the 2 thirds times x to the 1 third, you add the exponent, so that just becomes x to the 3 thirds, which is x to the first, and then the common denominator, and then plus 30 over 6x to the 1 third, and that gives me 30 over... 6x to the one third, which you might write as um, 1 6 x to the negative one third times the quantity x plus 30, but usually for what you're doing with these, this form is plenty good. Uh, so let's take a look at another one. Um, so I have x squared, the quantity x squared plus 1 to the negative one half, plus the quantity x squared plus 1 to the positive one half. And if you're in calculus, which is where this comes up for me, uh, you'll notice that's the derivative of um, x times radical x squared plus 1. If you're not in calculus, it doesn't really matter, because you're probably going to have to do these types of problems in Algebra 2 anyway. Uh, so same procedure. I'm going to rewrite it so everything has a positive exponent, so x squared, and then I'm going to drop this thing into the denominator. So x squared plus 1 becomes to the positive 1 half, plus uh, x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this over 1. So the common denominator is anything that shows up in either denominators. So that's just the quantity x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. So this already has it, so this is actually done. So now I have this part, put in parentheses. I need to multiply the top and the bottom by the quantity x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. Okay, so I do that. And then the uh, first thing's already done. So for the second thing, when you do the quantity to the 1 half times the quantity to the 1 half, that becomes the quantity to the first power, so just x squared plus 1. And then that's over the common denominator. So this problem is almost done. So combined like terms uh, gives me x squared plus x squared plus 1, where 2x squared plus 1 over uh, the quantity x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. All right, so I'm going to do two more. Same basic idea. So I have this problem. And uh, again, if you're in calculus, you'll recognize that that's the derivative of x squared times radical x minus 2. But if you're not in calculus, it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's do this. Rewrite everything with positive exponents, so it's going to be 2, and then x minus 2 to the positive 1 half, and then this is still 2x, the quantity to the 1 half, and then over 1. So my common denominator is 2, the quantity x minus 2 to the 1 half. So I go through this. So if you've wondered in Algebra 2 why you do this, uh, these vague things that I'm saying about being in calculus actually are, are a big part of the reason. So a process you do in calculus called taking a derivative, uh, these show up all the time. You've got to be able to simplify them. Um, so I'm going through the process, multiplying by the common denominator, top and bottom. And in this case, I have 2x times 2 is 4x, and then x minus 2 to the 1 half times x minus 2 to the 1 half is the quantity x minus 2. And then all over this. Okay, so that's going to give me um, x squared, and then... Uh, plus 4x squared minus 8x all over the common denominator. So that's really 5x squared minus 8x, so I can take an 8 out of everything, uh, rather an x. So x, and then I'm left with 5x minus 8 all over this, which looks pretty good. And one more. Okay, so we have this, and if you're in calculus, it's the derivative of that. Um, so I've chosen to use the product rule instead of the quotient rule. It's a choice. Uh, you could go either way. But you end up with this. So let's do this. All the negative exponents should become positive exponents. So in this case, the only thing that's left in the numerator is a 2. Uh, the 3 is in the denominator. x to the negative second becomes x squared in the denominator. 
and then the negative exponent on the quantity becomes a positive in the denominator, and then it's going to be a minus 2. The x plus 5 to the 2 thirds stays in the numerator, and then x cubed moves down. So let's see what we need here. We have a 3, an x squared, and that quantity. Um, so what we're missing is just one x. So I need an x there, so that'll give me the x cubed when I multiply that in. And then on this other side here, I'm missing a 3, and I'm missing the x plus 5 to the 1 third. So I'm going to have to multiply the top and the bottom by that. All right, so let's do that. So we get this. And I'm going to multiply that whole thing by x over x. And then minus this quantity. And multiply that whole thing by 3 in the quantity. So we get this. Okay, so... Um, on the left-hand side, that's easy enough. That's 2x over the common denominator. So it becomes 3x cubed, and then the quantity to the one-third. And then minus, I have 2 times 3 is 6. And then uh, x plus 5 to the two-thirds times x plus 5 to the one-third. Two-thirds plus one-third is 1, so it's just x plus 5. And then over the common denominator. Okay, and then I can kind of clean this up. So minus 6x and minus 30 over the common denominator. And then bring those together. And finally, I just factor a negative 2 out. So I get this. Um, so my advice when you're dealing with these kinds of things is make everything positive exponents, and then it becomes kind of the um, arithmetic, really, of fractions that you're used to, getting common denominators and working on it that way. Um, some people try to factor out the negative, and it just really doesn't work for them. Uh, but anyway, if you're good at that, do it. If you're not good at it, I recommend you try this way. So I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.